Okay. Um, I, I think we can get started for today. <clears throat> Welcome to um, SIG API. This is January 16th. I'm going to share the document link. Um, if everyone can put their uh, name in the attendees. Okay, so first topic I had queued up for discussion is um, to review the uh, in-progress PR. <clears throat> so as far as this PR goes, I, I think the review is done, um, waiting for the author to pass um, CI. Uh, there seems to be a failing um, a test that author needs to address. I've not seen any progress um, on this. Still waiting um, for Lugo to get um, any direction. I, I think I proposed an alternative design here. I would be open to, um, you know, POC this, but I'm waiting to hear if, if this suffices the need to um, you know, go ahead with, with the POC. And I think we have had discussions regarding this um, PR. I'm yet to consolidate the thoughts, but um, my plan is to uh, bring this up as a discussion point in, um, in the community call um, this uh, Wednesday, that is tomorrow. I think in general, the questions raised in the past was that, is it okay for us to set, set status in, in a webhook instead of from a um, reconciler? And we had discussed a couple of legitimate points um, why we, this should not be part of um, status. So um, I'll bring it, bring it up for discussion in, in the community call and probably follow it up in a uh, mailing list as well. So yeah, um, that's my progress. Um, did anyone else have anything to bring up? Uh, Edward, I... I did see some um, questions being added for this um, design doc. I'm not sure if you had any um, topics for discussion um, today, but I think I'll be happy to, you know, add thoughts and, and ideas on, on the questions. Oh. Is anyone else able to unmute and talk? Hey, could you please repeat the last uh, sentence? Yeah, I just saw um, Edward's message that um, he is not able to unmute. So I was just asking if this is if it, everyone is able to talk. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Let me see. Um, Edward, I think. The host for this meeting is um, Andrew, um, Andrew Barden. 
it might be worth it to reach out um, to Andrew and see if we can help out with the unmute. quickly looking to see if I find an option to unmute. Just a second. Yeah, I don't see any options to unmute or mute folks. Yeah, anyway, I, I think I'll continue with with the thoughts um, I had. So um, this design proposal is also on my list to um, review and, and add thoughts um, this week. Hello? Yeah, hey. I can hear you now. I don't know what's what's the problem with the with the with the laptop one. So what, can you repeat your question and maybe I can answer now. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So um <clears throat> I was just curious. Um this design doc had many um, at least a couple of reviews and there were some open questions. Um, do you have anything that needs to be discussed here um, from the proposal or um, is it something that we just have to take it um, offline and, and review it on the PR? Yeah, I, I, I got a few feedbacks and I was waiting to get uh, like a bunch of them so to see what our opinions, even for the things that were uh, posted, so I guess it's uh, this is a good time to to work on it. I will. I I was planning to do it today, but it's either today or tomorrow. I'll I'll finish going over all the comments and answer them. Change if change things if I as as it is needed, and then we can. I guess we can start discussing it because. I think enough time passed that we can go and try to push this forward. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you detected something. Uh, I I just didn't had the time to go over all of the comments. But if you found something that you would like to discuss now, we can do it. Uh no. Even I did not go through all of them. I just saw that one or two comments had that. Uh, something like this is this might be good to bring up in in the SIG API call. I so if you have not seen it, I think whenever you get to it, uh, we can discuss it then. Yeah, we will. Uh, let me we'll for sure. We'll have it for the next uh, week. We can discuss it all. But I'm 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 planning this week to finish it to go over okay. everything. Awesome. There is, I remember, one thing that we didn't close, and uh, several uh, comments came from it. That it's some, it's a very technical thing, and that I don't have a real good answer to. 
uh, we reference it to discussion that happened on on Slack on Kubernetes Slack. It's about the if you remember that if someone deprecates a field, right, from even from mm -hmm. an alpha field, then it's not really removed completely. It just uh, marked as deprecated and left as a no hope for the future. Um, this is the the part, and there is an explanation why. In the, I mean, we had this problem of explaining why this is needed. And there was a reference to some talk about it, but there is, I don't have the technical details of why it is important for alpha fields to be treated this way. Why, why not just remove them and that's it? Uh, okay. That may require is it more. This, uh, is it this issue that you're talking about? Maybe it's I link to 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 this, but maybe it is yes. I'm not really sure one hundred percent. Okay, yeah, I'll I will take a look at it. So so I think there are a couple of ways to deal with uh, that kind of question. One is to obviously go and ask uh, seek API machinery. Um, we can have it as a discussion topic on their agenda uh, or maybe even on their Slack. And second way is to just, you know, uh, deprecate a field and, and see how the storage works, see how it's in, in etcd and, and things like that. We can, both of them will, will take some time for us to, to figure out. So I'll try to, you know, research on that topic offline and see if, if I can provide some uh, thoughts and inputs there. Sure. So the only additional feedback that I have now, except of me actually starting to answer everything, is that uh, I would like to... I mean, to make sure that I'm, uh, we we progress with it in a more uh, aggressive manner, I would say. Like we need to finish it. We cannot drag it for months now, because the, we have yeah. a lot of features coming in, and and uh, and we do we did learn a lot from the experience until now. So we should we should put it in, even if it's not totally it doesn't cover everything. We should still have uh, be able to edit and just change it as we go if we find things that need to be updated. So I'll try to yeah. be more aggressive. So here. One hey. thing I would recommend is, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I wanted to raise uh, something that related to what you discussed uh, about uh, adding alpha fields to uh, graduated APIs. Uh, but if it's not fully related, I can wait so you can continue what you was about to say. Okay, sure. Yeah, um, I just wanted to finish off that topic. So I, I think what we could do is for the open issues, uh, if we don't find immediate answers and you want to be aggressive and push this proposal forward, can also create... Um, actual GitHub issues for for the sake to go track down. Um, and, you know, just like how we assign uh, PRs, we'll assign those issues on, on our project board here and chase them. I, I think that might help, uh, you know, categorize open questions into relevant issues and, and you know, we'll be able to track them down uh, regardless of the state of this proposal. So um, that's the only thing I wanted to say uh, regarding that discussion. Or do you want to ask me a question? Yeah, I wanted to raise something about, uh, like I said before, about uh, alpha fields on uh, graduated APIs. 
So I was wondering uh, how, what does what how how does it work? How it should work? So basically, according to Ku Builder book, you could uh, if you want to add alpha field for a stable API, you need to protect it with a feature gate and uh, do the and uh, implement it in your controller to uh, how to treat this uh, field. So. I was thinking, how can we, if it's if, if it's possible, and if it's a, even a valid practice, to decide when the feature is graduated or abandoned, to be able to remove that alpha field we added before, for that feature, I mean. So I asked in the Kubernetes Slack Slack and API reviews. Uh, if it's possible, and they say that technically you can, uh, but I'm not sure if it's recommended or not. So I just wanted to raise that for your awareness. I am sending the the, the Slack uh, thread. Maybe we can ask more questions and realize better if it's uh, something that we can have. If we can, it uh, we can clean up some. Uh, some stuff from our APIs that protected with, by, with feature gates that's not necessarily needed anymore. Uh, for example, the some uh, network binding plugins uh, that we that we can deprecate, or those who are already in process. Isn't this the same topic that we talked five minutes ago about the? That yes, we, but can uh, I don't we, know if. Yes, but I I don't I, I don't know the full details, so I was I was waiting to to visit the, uh, later. So the details, but but the topic is not really about uh, graduation or not graduation. It has nothing to do with graduation. It has to do with the fact that you once you you added the field to the CRD. Then the yeah. common practice that we saw in Kubernetes, at least, how they treat it, they never remove the fields, never. And there was uh, references uh, about it through some tickets or some even a Slack discussion about it, and uh, and uh, it it was it was mentioned there that it should not be removed, but there is there was no real good explanation technical that I could find if it's okay or not. Uh, to remove it and that's that's the point i guess so uh, it's it's a bit yeah. blur that part. it's not even uh, regarding to graduation because you could create an, uh, a field in alpha and then just drop the whole thing not even graduate it just drop the experiment so the question is have uh, the question is why can't we remove it so um uh, thanks for sharing that link um, Slack link and one of the responses that um, I'm seeing from Jordan Leggett is that if the feature is abandoned and the field is removed, then we cannot use the same field name um, ever yeah. again in in that type, right? So my question is that how do we protect ourselves from mistakenly using the same field uh, again. So let's say we remove um, some of the deprecated alpha fields um, in version V11, right? And 10 versions later, someone else comes in and, and tries to add the same alpha field. Is there any... Uh, technical way to to block that addition wait but because this is in exactly my mind what what, what yeah, why is it that, not this is the part that i'm missing why it is not it's why it's a problem i don't understand like i edited as what you said in one one the field with a with the name full and then i deprecate i mean i removed it because no one uses it anymore or i don't want them to use it and then I reach the 1.10, and then someone uses it, right? 
What's the problem? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. I mean, the, it's not in the CRD. It's where is it? Where is technically the problem here that someone used it in the past? So what? What I understand, yeah. uh, it's a it's an imitation of uh, Protobuf uh, API, and because you cannot, I think they you cannot remove a tag, but you can you mark it as deprecated and to, it won't be calculated or something like that. But uh, I, we need to look into that in for more details. So um, one idea I had. Um, is that there are places in uh, in the validation and mutating webhook where we can get the um, fields or children field of spec, right? So let's say if something is deprecated in spec, uh, so let's say the field being deprecated is spec.foo. And if we can get access to spec.foo without the colang structure spec.foo, then we can deprecate and remove the alpha field spec.foo and add a permanent um, validation in, in the webhook by accessing that um, field without the struct um, and permanently blocking uh, anyone to add that field again. Uh, that could be one avenue we can explore. Um, yeah, yes, you're right, but I, I, I will not do it because it's like cumbersome and it sounds like special and Kubernetes is not doing that. They are just keeping the fields there and so on. Still, I, I'm you are, you are talking about the solution of how to remove it and still keep, avoid someone from adding the same name, uh, field name in the future. I want to understand why I cannot, I cannot add the same name in the future. That's my, that is what I am interested in. Like, yeah, I, I don't, sense. I don't I, expect anyone to uh, have it. Like, maybe we can ask in that uh, the thread that I uh, that I send the link to. Maybe this that guy can give us more uh, details about it. Okay. So if you can find out the answer, the technical answer to that, then maybe everything will be clear because at the moment, as I see it, and this is how it is the, describing the current uh, proposition here, is that you must keep the old one. So until until we are, we don't, and I feel that until I don't have the technical details of, of that, the, that we can drop it and that's it, then we are okay. I will mm -hmm. I will take the most uh, safe path and just keep it like they do. Um, okay, so we have an action item to realize better to to realize why we have this limitation. And regarding what you said uh, before, Alia, Ali, and uh, you ask how we can technically protect us from adding uh, this field again. So uh, you can always write a linter, a complicated one, but uh, it has a very high cost and it takes time and uh, effort. And I don't, I, I am not familiar with uh, something uh, in, in the wild that already exists. Uh, but maybe we can do uh, some kind of a trick in the struct that we want to remove the field from. Maybe we can uh, do something with the, the JSON tags or put above tags to mark it somehow and keep it there. Uh, but yeah, this this is a, just, uh, just a thought. I don't have a solution right now. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure that um, whether protecting it or, um, you know, protecting ourselves from from that is going to be 
something we, we need to chase. So I, I think the question is, if we do end up removing fields that are deprecated and if there are <clears throat> uh, if there is a legitimate reason why Kubernetes, you know, cannot address that that concern, are we overly concerned about the fact that you know someone can add it later on and break things? Because if if that's a big concern, then we can find. Um, ways ways to solve it. If it is not, um, we can probably live with it for a couple of releases. Um, what what if we for just just uh, talking hypothetically, in theory, uh, what if we remove we remain the field, uh, unexpose it. And remove its uh, JSON or protobuf tags, so it's always there. But uh, and uh, put a comment that it's deprecated with a reasoning or something like that. And this uh, it, like this is the the the, the most uh, <laughs> uh, easy way to to document for the for the guy that's going to edit again in ten version versions from now. Maybe he will see yeah. it and realize, oh, we had it before, so we we shouldn't edit again. But this yeah, is a, yeah, I, a I think that's a good <laughs> yeah. I, if uh, yes, you're right. If um, keeping it in the struct and not having JSON and protobuf um, tags works, um, that then essentially what we are saying is it will be removed from the CRD definition that's being generated and it will be removed um, from, from the JSON encoding and decoding, but we will keep the structs uh, and it will be defaulted to the, to the colang type, uh, the default colang type. So yeah, I, I, I think that's a potential solution as well. If, if things work out that way, I, th I think that will be very uh, safe way to to safeguard uh, things uh, that, that are removed. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we're uh, we can go to the next topic because this is we all I I feel yeah. that we overthink about it and uh, until we have the technical answers it's very hard to see how to progress here. So again, in the meantime, we'll consider it as uh, we cannot remove it. I have just one input. Did you consider that uh, the object can be still stored in the database? And if you will re reuse the name and eventually use the the object with the old field, then the maybe the validation or maybe even marshalling could fail. I think this, this is the, probably this, the only way I can, From what I, can I know, see. if you remove the JSON tag, when you uh, try to marshal or unmarshal the struct, uh, it won't be calculated. Right. No, no, no. So consider we have an alpha field. I'm going to make a VM, but I forget about it because for whatever reason. Now I update the kubeword and the alpha, alpha field is removed. Still, I'm not doing anything. And I update kubeword again where a new alpha field is uh, like added with the same name. Now, if I'm going to use the really, really old VM with the previous alpha field, then it can marshal into the new one, but the new one can have different structure and that therefore it can fail. So, what um, if uh, Lugo... we. Oh, sorry. Please continue. Yeah, so I, I think that's a very valid. Uh point um, Lubo, but what we were discussing is that if we do end up removing um, a field, um, we could keep the the Golang struct for that field there with a, a comment and remove its uh, 
Protobuf and JSON tags so that the CRDs and, and the encoding that get generated in in the version when where that field is removed um, will still have the struct but not have the encoding and decoding for that field. That way, when somebody tries to add that field again, um, they will you know, see that Golang struct and not add it. Um, could that be a yeah. potential solution? Yes, I think so. I don't think it's a, it, it will not work. I mean, that's not a solution to the problem that uh, Lubo gave here. It's uh, the fact that you are hiding it. You have no way of ensuring that uh, it is no one will reuse it. It can be 200 lines in a different direction. So no one will see it. So you will just add another one and that's it. But but what you just said, Robo, if this is the technical reason that they are not removing the fields, then then fine. We could always say that I don't care about this situation because it was alpha. And if he if someone left the field there, it's that uh, that's his problem, like not my problem. So it was uh, it was not supposed he was not supposed to keep this uh, experiment running there. But again, it's, uh, if this is the technical Ed, Ed, uh, thing, that's it. I I think Eddie, um, uh, it's I we, I would like to you know go down the path of proving why this will not work, because um, if this is two hundred lines apart, then I think even Go compiling will will throw an error um, on adding the duplicate field, right? It's not a duplicate field. It's uh, it's only the the annotation change. I mean, the annotation is not validated that you don't have duplication and stuff like that. And uh, and you want to make it private, so private will not even be. It will be ignored uh, on the annotation. So it, I don't see. But this is like a, the solution. I find that the solution is less. I feel the solution is less important than the real thing. Like. The, the what what uh, what uh, Lubo gave here is an example that uh, that you it, it is saved in the database, so you are expecting not to use it. If you, if you want not to use it again, just keep keep it as public. Just change the name like they do in in Kubernetes today. Prefix it with uh, deprecated, and that's it. Like you have field full with capital F. You will call it now deprecated for with capital D, and that's it. This is how they worked. Uh, they kept the fields. Uh, we can do that, but that will still uh, not reduce the burden of maintaining um, that core base, right? So essentially, mm -hmm. what we are saying is that if if there is a flurry of alpha fields for new features that never make it to um, GA, uh, then basically we'll be maintaining all of that code. No, no, you're not maintaining nothing. You just don't, you, that line of in the struct will not be, uh, not be used. It's like just a placeholder to, to make sure that no one is using the same thing again. It's a placeholder. It's so when maintain. you say deprecated, you mean that the, the feature implementation behind that field will be removed yeah the feature is but removed. The field you is should not use yeah the it's this is what how we how it is done i think today uh, i think this is how it is done today in kubernetes i think uh, kubert also did it a few times uh, so this is a, this is the current i guess solution until we are uh, we can convince ourselves technically that it is okay to maybe to remove it completely with the risks. But until that, we will just, if you have a field named foo, you will rename it. Once you say that you don't want to support it anymore, the alpha is gone, you will call it deprecated foo. Uh, and that's it. And you finished. And then it's uh, the line is stayed there, but no one will use it. I mean, no one will use that uh, that 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 member of the struct anymore, and you will be safe for if someone else will try to add another field with the same JSON name, then it will fail.
But this is, a, I mean, maybe I should just write it. Uh, I don't remember if I wrote it in the document, but I will write it if I did. And that's it. Uh, by the yeah. way, Eddie, what uh, you, what uh, following what uh, Lubo said about the the story, the versions of the object in the storage, I think this is the main reason that, uh, from what I know, still being discussed upstream, why you cannot remove fields. So what you suggested may could could uh, could be solution for us in Kuvet. But we need more details, as we already said a few times. Also, there is. Uh, I have a. I have a second example, and that is. Um, did it ever happen to you that somebody called you, but it was totally mistake that it was their old friends? So, in like when you have a number, uh, you end up not using it anymore. They can reuse it right away, but eventually they reuse it. So. I think this is the case here as well. Like there could be some old YAML or something and, and the user could reuse it. So they just want to prevent uh, some kind of mistakes. Yeah, but again, you are right, Lubo, but this is how Kubernetes are very strict about it and they want to make sure they are in a very, very strong infrastructure and they need to think about all of these cases. But if you are looking just in Kuvert itself, then you could say that I will take the risk and say if this is the technical reason why it is suggested to remove the to not to remove the field and keep it, then I'm I'm willing to take the the risk of having this uh, edge cases in my system. I mean I'm willing to take the risk. Yeah, we could yeah. you could do it in Kuvert. I... Maybe it's very costly. Maybe in Kubernetes, but in Kuvert it's less costly. So I yeah. I think. I am of the opinion that we should not take these risks in, in KubeVert as well. And I could make a case for it, right? So there are two kinds of users for of KubeVert. One that um, create uh, ephemeral clusters and install KubeVert, um, you know, run VMs for their use cases, delete them, and, and create new um, <clears throat> ephemeral clusters again to run KubeVert. There are also users with long long-standing uh, KubeVert implementation. And I, I think uh, my use case internally follows that pattern um, within my company. So, <clears throat> We we upgraded from version three five to um, five zero five nine and then v one point one right. We went through all of that upgrade um, while keeping Kubeboard uh, alive. So if there are risks in long standing workloads um, where upon upgrade things will fail, I think users. Um, should expect the same level of stability as as um, Kubernetes um, in in terms of upgrades and, and APIs and and I think that's the whole reason why we want to start this um, SIG API effort right so if it is a safety concern on upgrade I think I would really fall back on on safety and not take that that risk yeah yeah I, I understand your point Ali, but the question in the end the question is. I think we discussed this in a different uh, context of a different part. Is if someone uses an alpha feature, a feature gated feature, right, which is even alpha, not even beta, then, then, in essence, he's taking a, a risk that uh, he's just he needs to understand that he's experimenting now. It's like he's a lab. If if he takes it to a production, then it's he's took he took the risk on himself. So. The pro the project could say that uh, in order for us to be uh, agile and uh, be able to uh, run forward uh, quickly and and be productive, I we are taking the risk that if someone used, uh, I mean, he opened the feature gate, he read the risk and he still did it, then it's on him that uh, if something can happen, he didn't clean things up. Of the future, but I, 
I mean, I, I want to say that there is a, a matter of risk that is on the one that uses it. But but I do understand what you mean. It just comes with a cost. I don't, in this case specifically, I don't think that the cost is so high. I mean, the fact that you just leave one field there in the struct, that, that's like a, a history of, of trials. I don't see it as a big problem because no one else will will use that field. It, it's there just to to keep us from reusing the same thing. So from as I see it, I, I don't have a problem to keep the field, but I do I do want to make sure that everyone understands that uh, if someone uses the alpha thing, he's taking a risk on himself that he and if he runs it on production, it's on him. That alpha thing could ruin his clustering essentially because it's experimental. So I hope you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think that makes sense. But what I am <clears throat> what I am thinking about is let's say we share and tell and educate users that from from this point onwards, right? And if you use an alpha feature in um, in a production cluster, this is how it could, you know, affect you. In a long-standing Kubert use case, if somebody has already enabled that feature gate and has been using that, and suddenly if we, you know, take this stance and decide to you know, break their workloads. Is it good user experience? Like what I'm yeah. trying to differentiate here is, okay, after making and, and, you know, thinking through this design proposal, we are calling the risks out about alpha features being used in production. However, we haven't explicitly communicated one way or the another uh, before this design decision was much, right? And it's obvious between you and I as developers that adding, uh, it, using alpha features is a risk, but for users that have already started on, on that path, uh, how would their, you know, what would be the options for them? Okay, so you this is convincing. You are saying that even if we set the rule from now that this is how we should uh, treat it, we didn't say that in the past explicitly. So because of that, we should be more uh, work safe. We uh, reduce the risk by not being so uh, aggressive. Okay, that's a that's a good reason why why to to try and keep it. Uh, safer but yeah it's it's fine I, again i'm not against uh, very i'm not really against uh, keeping the field if there is a good uh, reason it's it's fine you what your what your reason is is okay but for example uh, if people didn't understand that fe feature gates are meaning uh, the meaning is that they can the feature can be gone not to graduate then i don't think we can uh, I don't think we can, even if it was not explicitly said in the past. I don't think we can commit to keep the, all the feature gates, all the features that are co protected by feature gates. That's not reasonable. Um, but yeah. again, it's maybe um, it's a different topic. Yeah. So I think one one option is when that feature gate is being added we can introduce uh, a comment of what version that that feature gate is being added at. So for example, say alpha at 1.2, right? And from there, we can figure out that, okay, this feature flag is after our design proposal has merged. So it will follow a very strict guideline of, of deprecating and removing um, alpha fields. Um, it's on the users if they have used it. And if we find it that the feature gate is before um, 1.2 or whenever this design proposal is merged, 
we just be a little bit more careful um to address that that removal and i think that will solve um for both um corner cases um before and after um merging this proposal okay sorry again that i need to leave uh, before i have another meeting um if if there is anything i can you want me to comment on please please assign me to the to something here um, yeah thank you no problem thanks uh, for the discussion yeah i i think um <clears throat> i'm also coming to the end of um the agenda or topics um we had um i one last thing i think there are some open pull requests uh, that we can take a look at um unless if anyone has any more discussion topics for it for the call okay looks like we can go back to to the pull requests um So I think these three are already assigned. Let's take a look at this. Okay. Looks like it's adding a couple of status fields um, to instance type. Is it anyone? Oh, well, it's already on the to-do. Okay, if anyone wants to um, take a look at this PR from SIG API point of view. Um, it's there. Two, three. Uh, let's move on. Okay. I remember we discussed. Um, this PR um, very early in, in the SIG API calls. I think I will take a stab at consolidating the discussion and putting it um, as um, review on, on this. I would, uh, uh, if there is something more urgent, I would start with something else because this one, the first he needs to rebase and the, the guy that started it, I think is not available at this time. Uh, not sure when, maybe Lugo now. Uh, yeah, oh. I would wait. Okay. Um, at least until the rebase. Okay. Sure. So I'm I'm saying that so at least we know we have someone that uh, is he is active and can respond to us. Yeah, makes sense. Thanks, thanks for bringing that up. I missed this needs rebase label. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, I I think we can take this later. Right, we should actually add that as a filter here. Okay. 
Okay, that should, well, okay, that cleaned it up. And I think there is one more, right? Um, stale. I don't know if we have stale here. Okay, I don't think we have stale. So this should be it. Okay, this is, looks new. So I don't really think uh, this is a really big API change. It's just adding one more arch configuration type and, and the method for it. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it's it's not a big API change. I think we should be able to take a look at this one. I'll add it to the to-do. There shouldn't be that much, I think, in here. Sorry? There shouldn't be that much to look at uh, in the PR. I think it uh, simply adds the options for the S390X. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just one more additional option. It's, it's not a API change in terms of adding or removing fields. It's just adding a type uh, for existing fields, which is a small change yeah right so i think um, we can we can quickly look and approve yeah. this maybe we don't want to accept this because this is experimental and in the end maybe Kubert doesn't you know support this architecture but I'm not sure if, if i'm not sure if it's required right now to to extend the api okay uh can you engage on on the PR and you know call this out, or uh, alternatively, um, what I'm thinking is, what can we do here so that we can you know get this off our plate? Yeah, uh, just ping me please on the PR, and I will do it. Okay, okay, will do. Thank you. Okay, I think this one was interesting. Oh, no, I think it's a different one. So I saw a similar PR that was proposing adding node name to VMI 
spec. Okay, this one is adding node name to uh, VMI migration spec. Yeah, I think we can keep this one on the to do. Um, it it seems like a small one. I'm not sure if this is needed or not. Um, I'll just add it to to do so that if anyone has thoughts, we can add it on this. Okay, I think we are coming uh, on top of the R. I think we have quite a lot of um, to do's on on our board. I think this will be enough for at least next week, if not more. Um, thanks everyone for the discussion. I think it was really valuable. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you. See you next See you. week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.